Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tom O'Connor. Welcome back to the University of Florida Levin College of Law e-discovery project Story Booth. You got it Did right, sir. Right? Oh, tongue twister, and you prevailed. It's only taken me like ten attempts here today. Uh, yeah, we're getting close to the end of the day, so we're getting a little giddy here. Uh, but I am joined now by a old colleague of mine. I want to say you're not old. I'm I'm old. We're both you're, old, Tom. It's all right. <laughs> but uh, David Horgan from, and I'm not even sure. Tell me your exact title at KCURA. It is eDiscovery Council and Legal Content Director. There you go. Nice. We could probably spend 20 minutes just defining that, right? Exactly. But, but let's not let's not go there. Um, what I'm really interested in is because it's the end of the day or close to it. Um, your impressions of the conference so far? You know, as always, I think Bill Hamilton, professor of law here, has put together a great program. And I'm not just saying that because you and I are part of it. Um, <laughs> you and I both speak at a lot of these conferences. And uh, as a University of Florida alum, go Gators, uh, I'm really proud of what Bill has done here and that um, we've got one of the better conferences here. Um, the impressions this year um, are very interesting in that we've got a broad cross-section of people. We always have, but right. uh, for instance, in the session that we did, the early meet and confer, right. we had the government represented with Kenya Dixon from the Federal Trade Commission. Of course, we had uh, the Honorable Judge Matthewman giving the perspective from the bench. And then lawyers in the trenches. We had uh, Kelly Twigger of ESI Attorneys. And then, of course, the technology, techno lawyer Martin O'Day uh, was uh, also part of the panel. And, uh, you know, the meet and confer process is an invitation to be contentious in litigation. And uh, one of the themes that we had going through was how cooperation is really part of this process. And I right. uh, had the privilege of talking to uh, Judge Matthewman about it after the fact. And that's really something he hit home in our preparation sessions and as well on the panel. It's just that, it, uh, as our good friend Judge Peck has said, Here's the cost of your case with cooperation. Here's the cost of your case without cooperation. Guess which one is a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay, that's that's fair enough. I'm also interested, I don't know the number. Do you know how many people have attended online so far? My understanding was it was about 350 to 400 total. I see a hundred or so in the room there. So, so yeah, we, at least however, a few hundred. I didn't go to law school because I was good at math. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but. That to me, uh, along your point of um, how good this conference is, is I, I, I find it unique because I do not know that there is another conference that streams um, live all day, every session, um, at extremely low cost. Right, exactly. Um, which to me expands the scope. Um, so I, I like that. I mean, we're in a law school setting, of course, we've got great speakers, but to me that's very, very innovative, um, and especially given today's widespread internet usage, that, that's, that's a great feature. Well, tell me, shifting gears here, um, tell me what's going on at KCURA, what, what's, what's new well, and happening there? You know, it's a busy time, as you know. Uh, Relativity One, uh, the SaaS cloud offering is coming out, and uh, it's one of the things where it is a real game changer, because that's the way the world is going. And uh, as you know, you're at Advanced Discovery, one of our partners at KCURA, and uh, the Relativity ecosystem is a prime part of what the cloud offering has because you guys have so many consultants and so much expertise and the idea is that if that infrastructure is taken off your hands and the ability to practice what you practice, advising and consulting people on the process, we all take it to the next level. Right. And Good reception for that so far? Yeah, there's some major players who've come on board okay. and uh, we're Good. really pleased that both the service providers and the law firms have embraced it. Okay, how about on a personal level? What do you think about e-discovery in, in general? Where are we going? What's the, what's, what's the trend, or if any, that you spot for our profession? I would say the trend is a new acceptance and a new appreciation that data privacy matters. Because, uh, Tom, I think really? you agree, uh, yeah. Uh, you've seen the headlines from Washington, D.C. Well, the last several oh, days. Oh. <laughs> Apparently Congress doesn't 
share your Talking appreciation. About our e-discovery community, oh, Tom. Oh, um, all right, fair enough. Well, no, fair enough. The, the, the argument I would make is that it's always been, okay, give me everything in the kitchen <clears throat> sink. Right. And those things don't matter. But now that we're dealing with electronic data and all the information about us that electronic data carry, uh, Riley v. California, where the Supreme Court came down and said, you know, it's like an extension of your body, everything that's on that smartphone. Right. And um, when you're working in e-discovery, I think that's something you've got to keep in mind. And e-discovery, I think, is merging into other areas of the law, data privacy being a prime example, data protection. You've got to protect all that data. And we were ch talking about fishing expeditions by the nefarious characters earlier. So uh, <laughs> these are all exciting issues, and they keep us all employed. Well, that is what I see with the huge explosion in data sources and data types, especially, uh, we, you know, it's been mentioned here several times today that uh, social media and IoT, the Internet of Things, um, it seems like new subjects come up constantly that require education and, and certainly at, at Advanced Discovery, our consultative approach is to get with our clients as early as possible to analyze that and point them in the right direction. What what is not just what's the best tool, but what's the best use of the tool and the best mix of data, data sources, data types. It's it, it, it's, it, it is exciting times in that. Absolutely. Regard. So, final question, which we were discussing off camera um, just before we started, but I've been asking everybody today. If they had an e-discovery superpower, what would it be? You know, it's the craziest thing. When we talked about that off camera, I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, if I could have one superpower, it would be the ability to read backwards quickly. <laughs> because if you have ever taken a document and read it backwards, you can pick up so much more than if you're reading it the way we read documents usually, because your mind expects what it expects and it just gleams along. But if you're reading backwards, you pick up every little inconsistency and nuance. So if I could read backwards very quickly, I know it just sounds bizarre, but it'd be a great I, I, skill. I was about to say, I personally have never felt compelled to pick up a document and reading it backwards. And I'm interested in what drove you to that position. At what point did you look at a document and say, I think I'm going to read this backwards to see if I can glean more out of it? You know, I would like to say that I came up with it myself, but uh, actually uh, one of my dad's fellow naval officers had a business card that he used in his private business after he retired. And he had something where you would read the back of the business card backwards and see what you would pick up. It was like that old cartoon, Hocus Pocus. Remember where you had to get the little pieces out right. there and find what was hidden in the thing? On his business card, there were four or five embedded words that if you read it straight forward, you'd skip right over. If you read it backwards, you'd pick them up, and I thought, man, if you could do that in e-discovery, it, well, to use the term, it'd be a superpower. See, I, I, now, it made me flash back to the days of my youth and education under the Sisters of St. Joseph, Aha. where that skill would have come in extremely handy while I was sitting across the desk. Sister Mary Conscious giving you a tough time. Trying to read that report upside ah, down and backwards yeah. that she was looking at to figure how much trouble exactly I was in. Very similar to e-discovery in many ways. So true. David, always a pleasure to see Tom, you. Tom, great, great to see you, my friend. Great talking, and um, we'll be meeting down the road of e-discovery again, I'm sure. We will indeed. All right, thank you.